Akram Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam. Welcome to another power packed Sadhna, the Inward Path. On the show today, we go delectable with Anuradha's delightful dessert on conscious cooking, go healthy with Kugan on yoga for wellness, and go holy with Sadhu Rangarajan and the holy Tirukaral. Sri Manesh Maharaj also joins me in studio as we go on a journey with Katak. Manesh Maharaj is no stranger to our screens. He is renowned for his scintillating performances that offer audiences a rare spiritual experience through his passion for Katak. As a guru in dance, Manesh has also nurtured the talents of other Katakars through his tutelage. His school, Kala Darshan, celebrates 20 years this year. Manesh joins us in studio as we dance our way down 20 golden years. Namaste Manesh and welcome to Sadhana. Namaste Shridhika, it's great to be back on Sadhana. It's great to have you back. Then let's chat about your journey and reaching those 20 years. How did you start with Kathak? What drew you to the art form? Um, my journey uh, through Kathak especially, um, my formal training started in India under the guidance of my uh, beloved guru Sushri Madhuri Tasarang, with whom I spent uh, over seven years in Mumbai. Uh, training under the Guru Shishya Parampara tradition, you know. And for me, it was a profound experience to be under this uh, tradition, to get direct tutelage from a guru. Before that, in South Africa, I was exposed to dance, but not on that level. Right. So being in India was quite a revelation for me. Um, and it was a, quite an, a spiritual experience for me, I have to say, a blessed experience. And then bringing this, um, the different art forms, because I also studied classical music at the Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan as well. Bringing these um, sacred art forms uh, to South Africa, uh, enriching the cultural soil of our country, so to speak, and then passing on this legacy to the next generation brings me great joy, I have to admit that. And uh, to see it uh, taken forward through the, through the youth is something I've always endeavored towards. Well, it's something that you've certainly excelled at because everyone knows you and associates you with Katak and the art form. Um, but that decision to pursue Katak and to actually make it something that people want to pursue and something that people look forward to, this, 20 years ago, it wasn't the norm. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, when I was in India, um, taking dance is, is quite a norm in India for boys to dance, to take it up as a career. Because when you take up an art, a performing art, it doesn't mean you have to be a performer. There's so many other avenues you could venture into, you know. Uh, so being in, a, in an environment where um, it's quite rampant to be an artist, coming to South Africa for me was sort of coming to a desert, you know. Yeah. But I can't see myself sitting behind a desk. I see myself on stage, I see myself in the classroom imparting this knowledge to the future generation. And um, someone did say actually, you know, keep a plan B, you'll never know. But uh, I always thought if there's a plan B, then you might fall onto it. <laughs> so I did not keep a plan B, it was always plan A to dance and to be in music and be surrounded by art and artists. And I went for it and it's been 20 years and I have to say that uh, this art is steeped in the sacred. It was born in the temples, and this divine energy has uh, protected me and guided, guided me throughout. You've done a fabulous job. It's really phenomenal what you've achieved. But I have to say, was it difficult for you 20 years ago starting this journey? Because like you said, arriving back in South Africa was like a desert because no one did what you were doing or what you wanted to pursue. Um, was it difficult for you? Did you? What were the challenges that you experienced? Absolutely. It was very difficult on different levels. First of all, um, when I brought Kathak to South Africa, um, no institute was sort of teaching the art form in its, its pure way, I would say, just sticking to a pure Kathak syllabus. It was always um, other dance genres being included into the syllabus, like Bollywood and commercial dance forms, fusion, modern and all of that, you know. So for me to uh, uh, sort of launch an institute where I was imparting, imparting pure classical music and dance was a big challenge. Uh, but through time, uh, I think it is important for us, we are storytellers, we have to enlighten the community and society. Through time, we managed to um, carve a niche for ourselves, create our own uh, uh, sort of brand of rasikas or connoisseurs, as you would say, you know, and uh, build this for us, you know, enlighten them what the classical arts are all about. And as I said, uh, it's, uh, people have taken to it. Dancers have been inspired. People who thought they could never do this, you know, as a career have adopted it as a career. And are pursuing it currently. Absolutely. I mean, I have, over the last 20 years, 
I have trained students who are artists in their own right and who head successful arts institutions of their own around the country. You know, so we, it is um, a renaissance sort of, uh, so to speak, you know, and I feel um, if I didn't come back with the art, because I did have a mind of staying back in India, if I didn't come back to South Africa, we would never have had this. Welcome back. There are two things that I want to pick up on that you've mentioned already. Firstly, the fact that you mentioned that in India it's not a, a big thing for boys to dance or to attend dance school Correct. and perform. And in South Africa, that's a very different mindset. But you've changed that with Kala Darshan. The mindset is very different in, in South Africa with regards to male, male dancing, mm. especially classical dance. Mm. For some reason, the Bollywood is uh, fine. <laughs> But I think a society has a problem with boys bedecking themselves with, uh, with finery, with, uh, with the silk dhoti and costumes and, and makeup and jewelry. Uh, and I think it is so important for us to understand that when uh, an artist goes onto stage, especially a dancer, that he dances with the spirit and the spirit transcends all those barriers, the, especially the gender barrier. You know, all of us, all our spirits tra transcend that. So uh, it was, uh, I, f I mean, as an artist, you, there comes a point in your career when you uh, realize there's a bigger picture, you know, and you not only just focus on your uh, personal career as an artist, but you start looking at the different challenges that art is being faced with, especially in your country. And this, this is one of the challenges, the male dancer, the Indian classical male dancer. So I said, you know, I mean, I can't get the boys out of their homes or out of their predicaments, but what I can do is uh, create a platform for them, mm. you know. And two years ago in 2017, I launched the Purusham Dance Festival, which only concentrates on classical male dancers. It, that's the highlight of the festival. And we um, started off with just four male dancers, very, very well-trained, skilled dancers. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, last year, we had a total of seven dancers from three different classical dance forms. Oh. And this was historical because it has never been done. 2018 yes. is just last year, it's never yeah. been done. Yeah. And Indians have been here for over 150 yeah. years. So, uh, so you, it makes you wonder what's been happening, you know? Now you've spoken about challenges, you've mentioned challenges that you've overcome. Mm. Take us to some of the highlights of Kala Darshan for you. Well, over the past 20 years, uh, we've, we've got our work cut out at Kala Darshan in terms of um, art. Because we do have an audience, the community is thirsting for this art, but there's very few performances out there, classical performances out there. We have a lot of graduates graduating, mm -hmm. but somehow uh, we are unable to transcend that point, you know. And uh, I looked at that and I um, decided that we, get, we will have to create more uh, performances and programs for the uh, community at large and uh, as I said we uh, two, two weeks ago we just completed the Sankalp festival which I launched in 2015 and this festival is uh, for music and dance classical music and dance and it is aimed at bringing artists together from different genres be it Carnatic be it Hindustani all the Indian classical dance forms that are prevalent around the world coming together uh, under one roof and through this, we are bringing the artists together as well as the communities together. Uh, usually how artists work in South Africa is they prefer working in isolation. Mm. And for me as an artist coming from India and being part of that industry, I believe it's unhealthy for the industry, for the growth of that industry. What is important is that we work with each other, learn about each other's uh, different da dance uh, forms or music, da uh, music forms and bring that under one, one roof. And that translates into the community as well. Mm -hmm. It's not like if it's a Carnatic recital, only the South Indian yes. community has to go. Like this, we have bring the audiences together. So what is on stage is actually reflecting in the audience as well. Yes. But before we let you go, I have to ask you, for parents who are not so keen on their kids pursuing the arts and following the arts, maybe not forever, but just you know, they're scared of the stereotypes associated with it. Correct. What do the arts and dancing and music teach individuals? I, f I feel that parents, uh, first and foremost, um, when, when they have a, a child at home who shows an inclination towards the arts, mm -hmm. we have to remember that it is the spirit that is thirsting for it. Yes. And the spirit is, it is very important for us to enrich that and grow the spirit with the art. It's just not uh, a fantasy to dance on stage, especially classical dance. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that is thirsting to connect with this art form. And parents need to realize that. You know, um, and I feel that um, students who want to dance, 
should um, uh, look for a reputable institute. It's up to the parents if it's a minor. Look for a guru um, and um, embrace this, this thirst that the, the spirit has, you know, to dance. And as I said, uh, the relationship between the guru and shisha, it is important for a parent to know, to, um, for it to allow the child to have that relationship with the guru. Uh, yes, our parents and, and uh, our parents are our first teachers, but the next level is having a guru, mm. where the parent literally steps away and allows the student or child to have this relationship, which is so uh, unique to our Indian culture. You know, it is uh, it is it's an experience, a blessed experience to be enjoyed. It's so difficult to explain. That actually comes before learning the art. That relationship, if it is honored with truth, uh, the art that is the key that will unlock the art the flow of gyan between the guru and, and shishi. And I think parents should afford every child that opportunity to experience that. Now you've spoken about such a beautiful relationship, the guru-shishi relationship. What should parents consider when selecting a guru or when choosing a guru? It's important to do your research, to look at the history of the institute. Most institutes have a website, they have um, you know, videos posted up and, and uh, accomplishments and achievements. Do your research and uh, with my institute in particular, I'm very clear about this. If it is not what you're looking for, and most of the time it is not, uh, you're welcome to leave because your, your talents probably, probably lie somewhere else. You know, so uh, give it a try. And I have to say this as well, that taking an art form, a classical art form in the, in the initial stages, you, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not going to be fun because you have, you, the material body has to forget that uh, the pleasures and desires, the material desires of that body and mind and, and surrender to a spiritual path, which is not easy in the beginning. To, to reap the benefits of uh, something spiritual, the, the road is very, um, you know, difficult at the beginning. It's very austere and you have to embrace it to, um, to derive the fruit of, of the, your, your hard work, your labor, your, your sadhana. Thank you so much, Manish. Thank you for joining us. Conscious Cooking is up next and this time Anuradha preps up a quick and easy pastry dessert.